So 22,000 of you made the right decision. Just joking, thank you so much for your support and 22,000 subscribers. This is video two in my muscle growth series. So when I look at YouTube fitness, it's almost like certain people are taking raw information, science, and passing it through a filter, almost like an Instagram filter, where you can take your raw picture, pass it through a filter and change its appearance. That's kind of what I see within YouTube fitness. People who do not have the competence in communicating ideas to you. They take raw scientific information, they pass it through a filter of bias and misunderstanding and dollar dollar bills and they communicate it to you through that filter. And so the purpose of these videos is really just to give you the honest, transparent, easy to digest information which can help you. Now this video is not directly applicable to you. It's not something that you can take and answer a question. It is more of a philosophical video which should get you thinking along the right lines. It should get you asking questions surrounding muscle building which in the long term will help you to move through this fitness journey, to remove the disinformation and to internalize effective information to ultimately help you to achieve your goals. And so when it comes to being anabolic and catabolic, it's not as though you are anabolic at all times. And this is really badly communicated to you. And it's twisted where this idea, this concept that you need to be anabolic and therefore you need to take this supplement or this training program, etc. And it's just not correct because the main takeaway from this video is that you are both anabolic and catabolic throughout a day. The state of anabolism and catabolism is like a constant battle. You can think of it as the Game of Thrones of biology where it is this constant battle for being in an anabolic state in a catabolic state. And as you will learn throughout this video, catabolism actually follows anabolism throughout a day. And it is your goal to win the day. And that is why I refer to an anabolic state as a net anabolic state. That word net is absolutely essential and cannot be ignored because we are both anabolic and catabolic at different times due to different variables throughout a day. But over the course of a day, it is your purpose to be in a net anabolic state where you have created more of a net anabolic environment than a catabolic environment. So it's not like, oh, there's my mate Pete. Pete's anabolic, but Kevin, poor Kev, Kevin's catabolic. Someone get him some BCAA supplements. That's not how it works. And when it comes to YouTube fitness, a lot of these people who are pushing an anabolic state, you have to be anabolic. Don't go catabolic, bro, when actually catabolism is absolutely vital to life. These people deserve a Jonah Lomu handoff. This process of being anabolic and catabolic in relation to amino acids, protein synthesis, you, is not a straight line. If we were to if we were to represent it on a graph, not a scientific graph in my case, because I'm terrible at drawing, but it would not be a straight line of anabolism and catabolism. It would more be this sort of curved line with peaks and troughs, where at certain points throughout the day you are anabolic and certain points throughout the day you are catabolic. But the goal is to create net anabolism, where you are more anabolic throughout a day than you are catabolic. And why is this? Well, because catabolism follows anabolism. And so when you look at some of these celebrities in YouTube fitness who are unable to name bones of the body or unable to explain basic scientific concepts of training or eating to you, how is it possible that these people are able to carefully negotiate this process of anabolism and catabolism through training and nutrition and a multitude of factors when they and build these large full muscles and be eight nine percent ripped shredded abs how is it possible that these people who do not understand basic concepts can carefully negotiate this journey of anabolism and catabolism could it be uh wait I can think of stacks and stacks of reasons for that. And so what factors contribute to you being anabolic in relation to muscle mass? Well, these are, of course, your training, and this would be the type, the frequency and the intensity of your training, 
nutrition, amino acid uptake which is absolutely essential and this again will be the quality of the amino acids this will be the timing and the quantity and then we have other factors such as hormones we have recovery we have energy balance there is a whole multitude of variables which influence an anabolic and a catabolic state but here's what's really essential now let's look at what increases catabolism well your training and your nutrition and as you will see it's the same factors which increase anabolism. When you eat, not only are you producing anabolic reactions in your body, but catabolic reactions increase. When you are training, not only do you signal for protein synthesis and anabolic process, but catabolic processes are also increasing in your body. So you can see how this process of catabolism follows anabolism. And being catabolic is absolutely essential to life when we think about protein metabolism, the anabolic, the building up of molecules is vital for life, as is the catabolic processes, the breaking down of molecules. In this case, the breaking down of proteins, which are then reused in some cases throughout the body. This is called protein turnover. And if this did not occur, you would not be a very well person. And so stop fearing catabolism. Catabolism is essential but you want to make sure that you are more anabolic than you are catabolic. You are looking for net anabolism. That is your goal if you are building muscle. And we know that amino acid intake, eating protein, is important. As Moritau state, it was found that frequent meals increased net protein balance following resistance training. Now, instantly, some of you may say, well, do I need to eat many times throughout a day? Again, that's a highly variable answer based on the question. When we think about theory and practical application, it's not always that simple and nutrient timing is very complicated. And what I will tell you throughout this video is that for the regular gym goer looking to build muscle, you don't need to overcomplicate these things. And that means nutrient timing, nutrient intake, uh, quantity, training protocols. You can use the basics. It is athletes, elite athletes who are far more sensitive to aspects such as nutrient timing and training protocols because athletes train intensely many times throughout a day and they have to peak their performance for their specific sport and event. And you could also put bodybuilders into this category where they have to taper and peak for a certain show. Athletes have to taper their training and specify their eating so they're at peak levels during their performance. This is not something you have to do. You are looking to be physically fit and strong and to build muscle mass and, and to be lean, etc. And so you can focus on the basics. And when and in terms of protein quantity, I've made a video on that. In terms of protein nutrition timing, again, it's better to view it as a cumulative process throughout a day. You don't have to panic about taking protein at certain times throughout a day, such as an athlete would take. And so I've made a video about protein synthesis, this anabolic process of building up proteins. In essence, amino acids are chained together and the order in which they are chained together determines the type of protein. Now, intaking food is very important for this. And one concept that we can think about in terms of protein balance is called nitrogen balance because the, the protein we intake through food contains nitrogen, but we're also excreting nitrogen out of our body through many processes such as sweat and feces. And again, in my opinion, this relates to the post-workout anabolic window. Should you eat something post-workout? Is it a common sense idea? Is it sensible to eat food post-workout? Absolutely, yes, it is. Is there a strict anabolic window with a with a sort of countdown timer where you have to eat post-workout? No, there's not. And that is influenced by nutrient timing. If you've eaten food pre-workout, that decreases the need to take in protein post-workout. If you are in a fasted state, then actually that may increase the need to eat food post-workout. And so it's really a nuanced topic. And it's these statements are not conflicting. This is just the correct way to approach these topics. And so to create a net anabolic state, it is also useful to understand the concept of nitrogen balance. 
a positive nitrogen balance. And this is heavily tied into the eating of food. Now, is it a useful concept? Yes, it is. Can it be misused in fitness? Yes, it can. Do you need to consume your mind with nitrogen balance throughout a day? No, you don't. And so nitrogen balance essentially is the balance between the nitrogen you intake and you excrete. Now, when we eat dietary protein, that contains nitrogen. So we're building up that, that nitrogen store. But we excrete nitrogen through many daily bodily processes such as urination and, and feces and sweat, etc. And so if we are in a positive nitrogen balance where we are maintaining a higher uh, amount of nitrogen than we are uh, uh, letting out of the body, then this is conducive with an anabolic state. And, and when it's dietary protein, this is conducive to an anabolic state in relation to the building up of muscle mass, amino acids. And when we have a negative nitrogen balance, this can be conducive with a catabolic state. What does all this mean? This is a lot of information. This is quite confusing. So how do we break it down? If you are both anabolic and catabolic throughout a day, how do you know, how do you make sure that you create this net anabolic state uh, within a day? to contribute to, to your muscle building goals. Well, you just need to do the basics well. You need to focus on your eating and your training. Your training, which needs to be challenging to the muscle. And this can be done in many ways with many sets and reps and, and different types of uh, workout programming. But it needs to contain progressive overload and constantly challenging the muscle to, to force it to adapt and grow. And with your eating, you need to make sure you are getting quality food sources. Now, there are many different ways you can eat, but quality protein is absolutely essential to muscle building. Quality, meaning essential amino acid intake. The quantity, eating adequate quantity uh, levels of protein. I cannot give you an exact number in this video, but there are good guidelines out there. I've made videos on that. And Dr. Eric Helms has some excellent guidelines for protein intake. And so to summarize, I want you to focus on cumulative factors for, to create a net anabolic state. I don't want you to panic about these small minutia and of, of information such as eating at a certain time throughout a day, training at a certain time throughout a day. Throughout that one day, is my training challenging my muscle? If it is, then that's fine. I don't care if you're training at 7 a.m., 7 p.m., if you're training twice throughout the day, as long as you are hitting your target of challenging the muscle according to your training program, that is absolutely conducive with creating an anabolic, net anabolic state. And when it comes to your food, I don't care, again, what time throughout the day you're eating, as long as you are taking in those adequate amounts of calories and nutrient, macronutrients to help contribute to this net anabolic state. Now, remember that muscle is active tissue. Use it or lose it. Your body, your body does not want to unnecessarily store extra muscle mass. So if you want to maintain your gains, you need to constantly challenge your body. And this is why you should view training and eating healthy as over your active lifetime. I'm James Linker, Shredder Sports Science. I'll see you soon.